I have gone the full extent of my executive authority to do on my own anything about guns. Congress has to act. The majority of the American people think having assault weapons is bizarre. It's a crazy idea. We're against that. Welcome back to Way Too Early. It's 531 on the East Coast, 231 out West. I'm John Lemire, and that was President Joe Biden yesterday calling on Congress to take action to pass meaningful new restrictions on guns. His statement that most Americans support an assault weapons ban is absolutely backed up by recent polling, especially when it comes to young people. In a survey taken earlier this month by the Harvard Institute of Politics, and that's before Monday's shooting in Nashville, 58 percent of 18 to 29 year olds said they were in favor of banning assault weapons. 29 percent, meanwhile, said they were against the idea. Overall, 63 percent of young Americans expressed support for stricter gun laws, while 13 percent thought the laws should be less strict. Those numbers were essentially unchanged from a 2018 poll taken the, in the aftermath of the Parkland shooting in Florida. Joining us now, President of the American Federation of Teachers, Randy Weingarten. Randy, thank you for joining us this morning. From the discussions that you've had in recent days, but frankly, in the months and years past, with students, parents, and teachers, just how damaging has this epidemic of mass shootings, epidemic of mass shootings, been on the education system of the United States of America? So, I th so first, Jonathan, thank you for having me, and <laughs> I love the name of your show. <laughs> I've been <laughs> thank you for giggling being about it all morning. Um, look, every I think what Uvalde and now um, the the tragic Nashville shooting did. And I hear it from parents and from teachers all the time. People now wonder whether this is normalized. Already, gun violence is the largest, biggest um, a killer of youth. The largest, the biggest. And with these mass shootings, what's happening is that people are no longer um, uh, thinking that schools will be that safe zone that they need for their kids. And kids themselves are furious about this um, because there are ways of solving it. And, and I think that Joe Biden is right. And you can see it from the evidence that when we had an assault weapons ban, um, we had far fewer mass shootings. And the 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 you know, countries like Australia and Scotland and, and, and New Zealand who have solved this, Scotland has solved this, we can solve it. You look at these charts, we're off the charts in terms of mass shootings and other democracies of the world are not. So the, the question becomes why, um, why assault weapons have more rights in the United States of America than mm -hmm. children. And then the other piece is, on top of this, is think about what the same people who don't want to ban assault weapons are saying. They're going to ban books about Ruby Bridges, movies about Mo Ruby Bridges. Mobile Ab Alabama is banning a book about Harry Potter. So we're banning books that will help kids actually be critical thinkers and apply and know knowledge. And in this right. era of AI, GBT, you know, we need that. But we're going to so we're going to ban books, but we're not going to ban assault weapons. Right. And, and Randy, certainly, you know, I spoke to my own children last night about the shooting. Kids across the country have lockdown drills every day, it seems. Yeah. And, and on your other point, you addressed the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. yesterday about that different type of danger that schools face. Give us a sense as to what that is and what's being done, what should be done to address it. So what I did yesterday, Jonathan, was I went right for solutions. I knew I had to tell the story of what's going on in America right now, which is that you got, you know, you essentially have two Americas right now. And there's one America that is trying to actually say, how do we deal with learning loss? How do we deal with this youth mental health crisis? How do we deal with the effects not only of COVID, but of poverty, economic insecurity? And that's what I drilled down on, the kind of four things that I think, if we brought them to scale, 
we turn around um, education in this country and, you know, really make every public school a place parents want to send their kids, educators want to work, and kids thrive. And those are, you know, experiential learning, which we do now with CTE, expanding community schools, wrapping services around making schools centers of community, really deepening parent-teacher connections, and obviously addressing the teacher shortage. The other America, and DeSantis does this all the time, is widening the gap. They want the division. They defund schools. DeSantis just defunded schools by $4 billion this week. What do you think that's going to do in terms of school security? So that's what I talked about, that book banning, that dividing, that defunding versus what we really need to do to address learning loss and the mental health crisis. It's such an important conversation. Thank you for sharing You're some welcome. with us this morning, and we will stay on this, of course. President of the American Federation of Teachers, Randy Weingarten, thank you again for being with us today.